Kenny Rogers, the smooth, Grammy, winning balladeer who spanned jazz, folk, country and pop with such hits as Lucille, Lady, and Islands in the Train, and embraced his persona as the gambler on records and oh, in TV, died Friday night he was 81. He died at home in Andy Springs, Georgia, Rep. Keith Hagen told the Associated Press. He was under hospice care and died of natural causes, Hagen said. The Houston, born performer with a husky voice and silver beard sold tens of millions of records, won three Grammys and was the star of TV movies based on The Gambler and other songs making him a superstar in the 72nd and 82nd. Rogers thrived for some six years before retired from touring in 2017 at age say, 29. Despite his crossover success, he always preferred to be thought of as a country singer. You either do what everyone else is doing and you do it better or you do what no one else is doing and you do not invite comparison," Rogers told the Associated Press in 2015. And I chose that way because I could never be better than Johnny Cash or Willie or Waylon at what they did. Oh I found something that I could do that didn't invite comparison to them. And I think people thought it was my desire to change country and music. But that was never my issue. His Islands in the Dream duet partner Dolly Parton posted a video on Twitter on Saturday morning, NG, choking up as she held a picture of the two of them together. I loved Kenny with all my heart and my heart is broken and a big old chunk of it is gone with him, today, Pardon said in the video. Kenny was one of those artists who transcended beyond one format and geographic borders, says R. Trahern, chief executive officer of the Country Music Association. He was a global superstar who helped introduce country music to audiences all around the world. Rogers was a five, time C, M, I award winner, as well as the recipient of the C, M, a Willie Nelson Lifetime Achievement Award in 2013. The same year he was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. He received 10 awards from the Academy of Country Music. He sold more than 47 million records in the United States alone, according to the Recording Industry Association of America.